Hello everybody and welcome back to part 7 of our character setup videos for Unreal Engine 4. In this video we're going to look at calculating the damage for our weapons and we're also going to look at playing a fire animation when we use animation slots. So let's jump right into this. Uh, first of all look at the damage and for the damage we need to look at an image first maybe. I decided to go for a high-tech explanation for this and I made a little image in paint. Here it is. And this is how we're going to set up our damage. We're going to have three different range values. The maximum damage range, the minimum damage range and the maximum total range. And we're going to use two different damage values. The maximum damage and the minimum damage. So how this is going to work. If we fire a bullet and we hit something before this line, so before our maximum damage range, we're simply going to apply our maximum damage. If we hit something in between our maximum damage range, but still in front of our minimum damage range, we're going to drop our damage from maximum at this point to the minimum at this point. If we hit something beyond our minimum damage range, we're going to simply apply the minimum damage. And obviously, if we hit something after our total range, we are not doing any damage at all, because technically we didn't hit anything. So this is how we're going to set this up. And we need to create variables for this again. So open our info structure, and we're going to add a few floats in here. So new variable, and we're going to call this the maximum damage, or max damage. And turn this into a float and I'm going to create three more floats so one two three and the next one is going to be our min damage the next one is going to be our maximum damage range and the last one is going to be our minimum damage range and if we scroll up a little bit and look over here, we already added our maximum total range in a previous video, so we already got that one. Let's plug in some default values over here. The maximum total range is set to 4000, so we need to stay below that. For the minimum damage range, we're going to set it to something like 2500. And the maximum damage range, let's say 1000. The maximum damage is going to be 250 and the minimum damage 50. So that should do fine for now. We have some default values to work with. Let's close this down and go to our character blueprint. Open our base character. And you might have guessed it, we need to add these variables to our character as well. So we go to the weapon variables over here and we're going to duplicate one of the floats. And we call this CW max damage. We're going to create another variable, CW min damage. Again, create another variable and call this one CW max damage range. And the last one we need to create is our CW min damage range. And all of these need to be floats, so that's fine. The next thing we need to do is add these variables to our set active weapon variables function. So open this function and you notice these pins again. Empty pins, we need to get rid of those. So scroll down and drag in the new setters for the new variables we just created. And let's hook them up to the output pins. like so and make sure you connect everything to the other setters as well so we have our damage variables set up right now we can close this down and let's look for an empty spot on our event graph now the first thing we're going to do is create a new function so let's go to the left over here, create a new function, and we're going to call this calculate damage. Uh, 
and this function is going to have one input so click the little input plus over here and this is going to be the distance and this needs to be a float and we're also adding an output and that's going to be our damage and that's also going to be a float so that's fine let's compile this and go back to our event graph over here now we need to create a few custom events so right click and create a custom event the first one is going to be our apply damage event and we're going to create another custom event and this is going to be our server apply damage event because we need to replicate the damage to the server so we know so the server knows it needs to do damage for us so run on server and make this reliable now we are going to call the normal apply damage event from over here so drag off the server apply damage and look for apply damage event call the normal one now we do need to add the input pins over here as well so select your apply damage add a little input pin and call this one damage a float that's fine we're going to do the same thing for the server apply damage so add an input pin and call this damage and make sure you connect them up over here so it passes on the information and now for the apply damage event we're going to simply check if we have authority switch has authority and if we have authority we are going to apply the damage at this point we don't really have anything to apply damage to so we're just going to print the damage to our screen like so and if we are a client we are we are going to call the server apply damage event so look for the server apply damage and call this one make sure you plug in the damage over here as well so that should do it apply damage events so obviously if you really have enemies or something to apply damage to to you want to do this over here at this point we're just going to print it to the screen so we know it's working but point being you need to replicate the damage to the server to make sure this works multiplayer as well now we are going to create the calculate damage function so open it and let's create a little bit of room in between the nodes over here the first thing we need to do in here is add a little branch so hold B and click an empty spot we want to know if the distance is smaller than or equal to our maximum damage range so smaller than or equal to and we're just going to drop in our maximum damage range from here maximum damage range and plug this into the condition so if the distance is smaller than or equal to our maximum damage range we're going to simply apply maximum damage so if it's true go to a return node and plug in the CW max damage so if we look at the explanation again if we hit something before our max damage range we are going to apply maximum damage that's what we just did next thing we're going to do is apply our minimum damage so for this we're going to create a second branch over here connect this up to the false pin and we want to know if our distance is greater than float greater than float if it's greater than our minimum damage range because if it is we can simply apply the minimum damage so we are again going to copy and paste the return node and connect this up to the true pin and in this case drop in our CW minimum damage like so now for the last one we need to do some calculations to actually get the damage so we're going to copy and paste the return node again and connect this up to the false and to get the damage we are going to do some math so first we're going to drag off the distance over here and do float minus float and we want to drag in the let me check my notes real quick the maximum damage range from here drop it onto the minus node 
from here you want to drag off and say multiply float multiply multiply it by float and we want to multiply it with our CW max damage drag that in and our CW min damage drag it in as well from the maximum damage drag off and type float minus float connect up the minimum damage to the other pin and we're going to do the same for our ranges so first dra drag in our minimum damage range then we drag in our maximum damage range we're going to drag off the minimum damage and do float minus float connect up the pin to the other one and we're going to divide these two by each other so drag off the damage one and look for float divided by float plug in the other pin onto the other divide node and we're going to plug this into the multiply node over here now the only thing we have left to do is drag in our maximum damage CW max damage drag off this do float minus float and plug in the result into this pin and now we can return this as our damage so this should work and this should reduce our damage from our maximum to our minimum equally in between those two points so let's compile this and let's check this out in game let me fire my weapon and the damage should appear on screen but it doesn't because we didn't put anything in our bullet hit event so we are going to open our bullet hit event function and we're going to create a little bit of room over here so move over this stuff and right after the first branch disconnect the execution pin and we want to call our calculate damage event connect it up to the true pin and get the distance from the hit result over here and after the calculate damage you want to drag off this and call the apply damage call the normal one apply damage event and make sure you connect the damage pins like this and now if we test this we should see our damage in the top left of our screen just like so so if I fire my weapon and I'm getting closer you can see the damage increases I'm doing maximum damage right now 250 it doesn't increase anymore because that's our maximum damage if I keep shooting and walk backwards you can see the damage decreases 225 28 24 185 170 140 100 89 80 to I get to a certain point where it won't drop anymore but it simply stays at our minimum damage which is 50 over here so we got our damage calculations working and we are calculating different damages based on our distance awesome let's close this down and let's save this for now save everything next thing we're going to do is look at playing a fire animation for our weapons and we're going to use an anim slot for that now if you use a paragon character the slots are already set up and you really don't need to do anything if you use a different character you might need to create a slot so first thing you need to do is go to your skeleton asset and over here in the anim slot manager you can simply click the add slot button and give it a name so you are going to call it something like upper body slot or upper body and create a new slot uh, the upper body slot is already here and there's tons of other slots as well uh, there's really nothing to this except it's a name and you're going to define what you want to do with it later in the anim graph so just add a slot give it a name and that's it save and compile your skeleton asset then you need to go to your animation blueprint and we go to our animation graph over here we need to change some stuff disconnect the locomotion from the aim offset right here so it's the final animation pose and we have the aim offset we're going to disconnect the state machine we got over here move this to the side and drag off this we want to say uh, slot to get the slot node and select this one 
and in the top right you can change the slot you want to use. So in the details panel select the upper body slot right here, default group upper body. After this we need to create a blend, so drag off this and do blend bone. So we're going to select the layered blend per bone, select this one. We need to change it so the upper body slot is in the blend pose, so hold control and move the pin to the other pose, like this. We're going to simply copy and paste our jump locomotion state machine and plug this into the base pose. And we can connect this up to our aim offset, like this. Now all we need to do is set up this blend. So we select this node over here and we go to the details panel on the right. Click on the layered setup, click on the little arrow again so it expands once more. And we need to add branch filters. Click this three times so we add three branch filters in total. And we're going to define the first one, so open this. This is going to be our pelvis bone. And the blend depth is going to be set at four. For the second one, open it and this is going to be our tie right. So tie underscore r and the blend depth for this is going to be minus one and the last one is our tie left and we're going to set this at minus one as well and the last thing you need to do is select this flag and then mesh space rotation blend make sure this is enabled so if you're using another uh, character or skeleton than the paragon ones, you probably need to change this. This is based on the actual skeleton, these are the bone names, and it all depends on how your bones are called, how your rig is set up. So you might need to mess around with this. I got these settings from the paragon example, so that's how I got the settings over here. I'm really not an expert at this stuff, but this works in this case. So plug in these values. Let me check what we're going to do next. We don't really need to do anything in here. Make sure you connected up the poses again so that's working and compile and save this. Let's close it down. Now there's one thing. This stuff only works with animation montages and not with the animations itself. So we need to create a montage for it. So we're going to go to the animation folder and we're going to look at the animation we want to use, the fire fast for example. Right click on the animation, at the top here you'll see create, create anim montage, select that one. The default name should do fine for me, so fire fast montage. Let's open it up and there's only one thing you really need to change in here and that's our default slot. Just click it and you want to change it to our upper body slot. So select the same slot as you put in the node in the animation blueprint. So the upper body slot. Now you see this pop into a, a pose. Uh, I think this is more of a visual glitch. You can simply uh, drag this little bar over here really small and it'll start playing the animation again. It's not like something is really broken, it's still working. So just a little note over there. So set the slot to the upper body slot and you can close this down. I'm going to do the same for the fire reload animation as well. So create an anim montage. The default name should do fine. And I'm going to set the slot to the upper body slot and save and close this as well. The next thing we need to do is play the animations from our character blueprint and we're going to add a variable for this in our info structure as well. So let's open the info structure first. Let's create a new variable and we're going to call this fire anim. And this is going to be an anim montage object reference. So select anim montage object reference over here. Save and close this down. Now open your data table and we're going to set the animation montages. So I'm going to scroll down over here. I'm going to go to the folder and select the montage I want to use. And then I simply click the little arrow over here and that should do it. I'm going to enter the same montage for the rifle and for the burst rifle. 
and for the shotgun ones I'm going to use the fire reload montage so the secondary and the shoddy just like this and we can save and close our data table go to our characters bl blueprint and open the base character and we're going to add some stuff in here but first we're going to add the variable so expand our weapon pairs and just duplicate one of these I'm going to call this CW fire NM and this should be animation montage object reference so change it over here and look for NM montage and select the object reference again next thing we need to do is go to our set active weapon variables function double click it to open it and we need to fill the fire anim so drag in the new setter we just created connect it up to the output pins and make sure it's connected to everything else as well just like this and at this point we're going to go back to our event graph and we're going to create some custom events let me scroll down in my notes a little bit so we're going to need three custom events for this right click and create custom event the first one is going to be called play fire anim come on the second one create custom event and call this one server fire anim play fire anim I'm sorry We're, we are going to set this one to run on server and it's going to be reliable now it doesn't really need to be reliable it's just cosmetic so don't make this reliable and we're going to create a third one custom event and we're going to call this the MC play fire anim so that's our multicast event so for the replication set this to multicast and that should do it now the server play fire anim is going to call our multicast event so drag off this and look for the multicast play fire animation and from the play fire anim we want to drag off and do has authority if we are the server we are simply going to call the multicast directly so multicast play fire animation and if we are a client we are going to call the server play fire animation just like this and for the multicast event we are going to play the montage so drag off here and type play anim montage select this one and for the anim montage itself we're going to drag in our CW fire anim and that should do it over here so let's put a comment around this play fire anims and now all we need to do is call this play fire animation from the fire bullet event so we're going to look for our primary attack event over here primary attack and look for the fire bullet node in here and we are going to place our play fire animation right in front of here and make sure it's inside this loop so let's create a little bit of room over here right click and type play fire anim select the normal play fire anim hold control and move over the pins make sure it's inside the loop and connect it back up to our fire bullet event and now this should work so let's compile and check it out in game so you can see right now if I shoot my weapon the fire animation plays and if I choose another weapon we will get the shotgun rechamber animation so we actually added different animations for different weapons and they are working they are only playing at the upper body and we can run and shoot at the same time we can run and play the rechamber animation at the same time so we don't really need to do anything else as long as we use the animation slots 
let me check if this also works in multiplayer because I already know it doesn't. Let me show you. Let me resize this real quick. Like so. So if I'm the server and I'm firing my weapon, you can see the fire animation play on my screen and also on the client screen, the fire animation is playing. So in the first uh, side, this looks like it's working. Also the other way around, oops, I hit the wrong button. You can see if I fire with my client, you can see the fire animation playing. So it looks like it's working. But if I switch my weapon, so if I go for the other fire animation, you can see my client still plays the rechamber animation, but if I go to the normal view again, because you couldn't see with the wireframe view. So if I fire the shotgun animation, you would simply see the normal animation play on the client screen. And that's because we didn't set the variables to replicate. And I just wanted to show you. So we did set up the events to replicate in our event grab over here. We made the multicast event and we made sure it ran on server and it's set as reliable. So, or it's not set as, re as reliable, I'm sorry, but we made this run on server and it calls our multicast event. So we did do our replication part over here, but we didn't activate the replication for this variable so select the CW fire and and make sure you set this to replicate it and we also need to go to our server set active weapon variables and make sure we set this over here as well so we need to drag it in and connect the fire animation like so now this variable will replicate over the network and we should see the correct animations play so let's check this out resize everything real quickly again so if I'm firing my normal weapon you can see the normal fire animation play I'm switching to my shotgun and now in both screens you see the shotgun animation so the replication seems to be working let's check it the other way around this time I'm the client you can see on both screens my weapon fires I'm switching to the shotgun and on both screens I'm playing the shotgun rechamber animation as well. So we fixed our replication. So that's how we set up the fire animations using animation slots. I think we got everything covered over here, so save this. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Laters!